Ongoing boycotts, hundreds of millions of dollars in losses. Is this the end of the iconic chain Planet Fitness? Twenty nineteen, you might recall we did a complete review of Planet Fitness with the expected earnings, how much it costs to invest, and whether or not it was a good investment at the time. I'll place a link at the end of the video and above if you want to take a look. Now today, probably a worse idea to buy a Planet Fitness as they are hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars. Some estimate up to about 500 million and losing thousands of members due to this ongoing boycott. Always remember when you buy a franchise that the decisions made by corporate head office or even things that happen at other locations are going to reflect on your location and may cost you money. Your values should always reflect those of the franchise you buy into and don't be afraid to ask these cultural questions before you invest. Anyway, so what happened? A woman, Patricia Silva, went into her local Planet Fitness to change and there was what appeared to her a fully intact man, if you will, changing and shaving at the sink. Now the woman confronted the man who told her he is LGB and self-identifies as a woman. So woman goes to front desk, complains there is a fully intact man in the woman's change room. And at the same time, there was also a 12 year old girl who was being exposed to this alleged man. Uh, lady snaps a picture that she shared to social media to complain about it. Uh, Planet Fitness then cancels the woman's membership and files a police report against her. Their official statement coming directly from Planet Fitness, this discomfort, meaning the discomfort suffered by this lady, uh, is not a reason to deny access to the transgender member. So what nobody seems to really be discussing is this discomfort, as they worded it, is the reason why men's and women's change rooms are separated in the first place, right? Women didn't want to see wieners flopping around all over the place, so they got their own change rooms. So right now, women and men around the country not happy with this decision and are leaving Planet Fitness in droves. Their stock has tanked, losing hundreds of millions of dollars in the process. Now, this could potentially prompt a shareholder lawsuit as it could be argued, this decision was impulsive, poorly thought out, and was doomed to hurt shareholder value. Now, I'm not taking sides. I've never been in a Planet Fitness, nor will I ever be in a Planet Fitness. But the first question that I would ask is why one person's discomfort level is treated with a higher level of validity. We need an answer to that question beyond just these feelings and virtue signaling and what corporations think is the best way to handle things just based on people's feelings. Why is the genuine female concern of being in close proximity to a complete stranger's wiener just brushed off like it doesn't matter at all? And if Planet Fitness really cares about this issue and wants to take care of everybody involved, why wouldn't they suggest they would create a unisex change room instead of taking one sides and defending it and dying on the mountain. Now, the second question, is Planet Fitness qualified to determine the difference between a potential predator and a genuine transgender person? Now, despite popular media claims, most people don't have a problem with transgenders. That includes conservatives. Blair White, transgender person, very popular among conservatives. Nobody has a problem with Blair White, for the most part, being in a woman's change room. Dave Rubin, openly gay conservative, two million subscribers. Doug Murray, openly gay, very conservative man. Now, advocates say that predators won't and do not take advantage of these opportunities, but we know that to not be factually true. In fact, assaults have happened at schools to young girls and were covered in perhaps the most famous case where Superintendent Scott Ziegler said their school had never had any form or incident inside a bathroom or locker room involving a transgender child. And they actually quoted this Time magazine, what I would call a propaganda piece. Well, that was determined to be untrue. And shortly after, a juvenile who had used this self-identity policy to gain access to the girls' bathroom, bathroom was criminally charged. 
terrible case. It wasn't the, the only time it happened. This individual who was charged had actually done it a couple of times. So this is a problem and it does happen and should not be just brushed off, in my opinion. Genuine question. Are there predators and sick people in our society? The answer is yes, we know that. And that's not a question even directed at transgender people. It has nothing to do with transgender people at all, regardless of what your opinions on that topic. Now, couldn't some of these predators look at these increasing policies that are going on all over the place as a loophole to enter these historically safe women's spaces? Now, the answer is obvious, right? <laughs> the answer is yes. They could potentially do that. Now, the next question is, do mechanisms exist to be able to tell the difference between a potential predator and a genuine transgender person? And what mechanisms are in place to protect women in the event that something may happen? Absolutely zero. This decision is given at the complete discretion of the identifying party. So essentially anyone can say they're a woman and go into women's change rooms based on what they're saying. Also women's prisons and women's washrooms anywhere at all in the USA. Now to me, this seems somewhat unfair to women, but I'm not a woman, I'm not transgender, so I'm going to stay out of this issue. Be interested in hearing what you think. If you want to learn more about franchising, there is a playlist above. Thanks for watching.